People are like, who is Danielle Victor? And I'm like, bitch, it's Danny with two N's. Am I a fashion blogger? Maybe. Am I a storyteller? For sure. Am I a badass bitch? Absolutely. So if you're smart, you'll subscribe to my channel. to the Topsfield Fair tonight. It was my first time ever going. And I've lived in Massachusetts my whole life. And it will also be the last time that I ever go. Um, we went because we wanted to do something for Marcellus. And Gabby got this bout of anxiety before we walked in. And usually when you get like these little weird signals from your higher self, we should listen. And I said, do you want to leave? Do you want to get the fuck out of here? Because I'm totally down. And we were like, no, let's just go in. And we went in, and you guys, it was like the fucking Twilight Zone. The tw Number one, the way they have animals there makes me so uncomfortable. It's not like they're living in a barn, and they're getting loved and taken care of, and they were like in a sanctuary where they're going to be loved and taken care of for the rest of their life. They were like in cages. Everything smelled really, really bad. And it just made me realize, one, why I'll never eat meat ever again, and two, how much I wanna just save animals' lives. I know. I know, baby. Say hello. Say hello. Oh! Giving mama an attitude. And then there was people walking around just ripping with like these turkey, like these huge turkey legs. And they were just like ripping the meat from the turkey leg with their teeth and like just I don't know you guys I was like Gabby I hate to I hate to do this but like we need to leave and we left very quickly we got like Marcellus some fried dough and some ice cream you know what kids love to do when they go to that type of shit and then we fucking got out of there and then the car ride home it went from like light out to extremely pitch black but every street didn't have street lights and I was like this is this is this is all getting a little strange to me it's getting weird. And then I was gonna come home and film a video, but I realized, I don't know if it was the heat or the moisture, but my eyebrows, the way they were painted on was just like not a vibe. So I was like, I'm wiping my makeup off, putting on my pajamas. You drank the water too fast? Yeah. You drank the water too fast? Mama knows. You love mama? You love mama? You wanna give mama kisses? Mama? Mama? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> this is what I'm gonna do for the rest of the night and read a book. And my hair was like, I just got it done today and it was so straight. And look, oh. <laughs> it looks so good and then it like flares the fuck up like, look at that. can you see the back of my head girl the back of your head is ridiculous <laughs> alright I'm gonna go smoke some weed and read peace out y'all hey um to anyone that likes going to fairs and stuff like all the more power to you i really like shout out to moms that have to bring their kids to shit like that because they just couldn't do it but all i'm saying is it's not for me and i like pick up other people's energies and there was just a surplus of energy in there and it was not my own and it makes me very uncomfortable like there wasn't for one second was i comfortable in that bitch well i'm comfortable here at home Damn, I really be looking the same I did like 12 years ago. I am eternal youth. Look, my notebooks, my books, I'm ready to go. Okay, bye again. I think the key is this thing called life. It's just to be happy. If you live in a shack, or on the streets, we're in a mansion. 
I say the key to finding bliss is for finding peace. And when you find peace, you find happiness. When I was living in LA, I met so many rich people, people that have fans and admirers and people that are like, I wish I could be them. There was so much sadness in their eyes and I didn't see it then, but I reflect back on it now. And we just never know anyone's story or what anyone is going through. And one of my favorite things in the entire world is spending time with my family. And I'm really blessed and I'm so grateful to have one. I know many people do not. And I know this is a luxury that universe God source creator has given me and I am so lucky. I'm lucky that I get to come home to get into bed that has pillows and warm blankets and a gang full of dogs that love me unconditionally and get so excited when I walk through the door. That I get to wipe my makeup off and wash my face and take a warm shower and put on new fresh clothes and brush my teeth and get eight hours of sleep and wake up and repeat and do whatever it is that God intends me to do. I'm grateful for that. I have peace in knowing that life is perfect right in this very moment. Whether I get to where I want to go or all my desires manifest, life is great right here and right now. And I am so happy to be me. And I guess I just want you guys to go to bed tonight and not compare yourself to anyone and not go on Instagram and compare your body or your car or your boyfriend or your relationship to anything you see online. I want you to say at least five things you're grateful for in your life right now. And if you can't come up with five, do three. And if you can't come up with three, do one. And do that every single night before you go to bed and realize that you are lucky. Because gratitude will change it all around. Like, let's say you don't have a house, but you have a car that you can stay in. It's not ideal, but thank you, God, that I have this car that I can sleep in at night. Thank you, God, that I have a car so I can try to go get a job or get my life together. There's so much in a negative situation that's positive, and we always look past that. And why? Anyhow, food for thought before bed. I am going to take a shower, wipe this makeup off. <laughs> and go to bed. I love you all. Good night. Nice little cry sesh for my vlog. I feel so disconnected from people that I used to feel so connected with. And I think that people around me don't understand this new version of me and it's so hard to just like genuinely be my authentic self without someone saying something about who I am and who I'm becoming and it being an issue like you're so serious all the time not everything has to be that deep and spiritual like tonight I said it's 717 no someone said it's 717 I said whoa feels like it's midnight and they responded like you're so boring and lame now and it literally felt like midnight so it's the eclipse i went to bed i meditated at like eight o'clock last night woke up at like 9 15 let my dogs out gave them a treat and got back to bed and immediately knocked out so it's just like sleepy energy vibes i'm sorry that it literally felt like midnight at 12 like when you're with someone that you could have talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked and talked to to then asking so what do you want to talk about it makes me really sad I feel like sometimes you could be in the same room with someone and not even not even on the same planet. If people are vibrating at different frequencies, I 
think it's really impossible for them to understand each other in a way that makes sense to both of them. And so I just want to say I'm kind of sad tonight. My heart kind of hurts, but everything is all purposeful. Everything happens for a reason, and I'll be all right. I will be all right. Love you all. Good night. I just woke up. Clearly, I'm in the same <laughs> top that I wore before I went to bed. And I go downstairs, and my mom is about to make this Haitian dish. Uh, legume. In a crock pot. And I was like, that's not how we do it. That's not how Gabby does it. And she rips my head off and rolled it down the street. And I'm getting real, 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 real tired. Of how people in this family talk to me. I know you can't take anything personally, but. And then so I tried to have a conversation with her. Like, you can't talk to people like that. I'm literally just telling you that that's not how we do the dish. And she goes, well, I don't feel like being questioned by anyone. So just like you got offended that I ripped your head off, I got offended that you questioned what I was doing. And I feel like that's something a narcissist would do. Instead of taking accountability for how you made someone feel with the way you were speaking. You try to play victim and flip. And that's what so many people in this family fucking do. I feel so alone. And then I tell her like, you need to work on yourself. We all have to do deep healing. Our, our, the way our relationship is, the way your relationship is with both of your daughters is not, is not, is not well. I do not need to justify my actions to anyone. I don't have anything to work on. What I need to work on is setting up boundaries so people don't treat me like shit. What? And then she goes, everyone in this family has stuff to work on. I go, you just said that you had nothing to work on. She goes, I didn't say that. I go, you literally just said, I have nothing I need to work on except setting up my boundaries. So now you're saying that you do have issues you need to work on. She goes, I don't need to justify my actions to anyone. I go, but you have to justify your actions when you're making other people feel like shit. At seven o'clock in the morning, right when I wake up. It's never been more apparent to me, the shift in timelines. I feel so unclose to everyone around me. I feel like I'm literally here, but not here with them, even when they're in the same room. And then she says, you know, this family that you're so frustrated with, you know, did a lot to save you from your dark situation. Okay, hey, I let you move back in. And like never in the history of ever have I ever done anything for someone just to say I've done that thing for someone. And I just said that to her. I said, you shouldn't do something for anyone. So you can later on say, well, I did this for you. And she goes, no one just said that. I'm like, she literally just said that. And it was like a complete mind fuck. At seven in the fucking morning. <laughs> and I know this is a test of the universe. Maybe I'm failing. when I moved home from California I had my Acura 
and the car just reminded me of the darkest time of my life so I didn't want it anymore so when I got my title from California which took over a year I sold it and I gave the cash to someone in my family and never in the history of ever will you ever see me say when I had 34 cents in my bank account I sold my car and gave that money to you never will I ever fucking say that shit I got people over here throwing it in my face that I was almost murdered and needed fucking help. <laughs> I wanted to share this moment with you because I wanted to show you that this path of healing is not linear. It's not a straight shot. There's always going to be a test or a bump in the road or something that's going to trigger you into really deep healing. So that's what's being had. That's what's happening right now. So I'm just going to say a prayer to God. Please, God, make me an instrument of thy peace. Make me an instrument of thy kindness. Make me an instrument of thy love. Make me an instrument of thy patience. Make me an instrument of thy compassion. Make me an instrument of thy joy. Baby, hiya, hiya, who are ya? What? Hold on, let me flip the screen. I wanted to end this vlog by saying that despite how frustrated I get with my family from time to time, we or whatever fights or predicaments we get into or arguments or disagreements, we'll always get together and finish cooking the meal. We'll always sit down at the table and eat with each other. And I realized tonight, and this is how I wanna end the vlog, by stating that I realized while I was just taking a shower right now that I haven't had a hard life. Come here, baby. Come here. I, you know, when I was growing up in an all-white town and all the girls were wearing Abercrombie and Fitch and Hollister and my parents could afford it, they still busted their ass to get, to get me bobs. And at the time, you're so ungrateful and you're so mad as fuck that your parents can't get you what all the other little girlies are wearing. But you have no idea what struggles they're going through or what they're dealing with or the stress they're going through. But when I look back on my childhood and my high school years and even going into college, I always had a roof over my head. I always had a car to drive. I had the opportunity to go to college um, and my mom is still paying off those student loans. I always had food on the table. When I got arrested, I had somebody to bail me out. I have been so blessed my entire life in so many different ways. I have been extremely lucky, extremely blessed. I have lived a rich and wealthy life, even if at the time it didn't seem like a rich and wealthy life. I was indeed living a rich and wealthy life. You know, Christmas and holidays have always been special. We've always sat down at the table with each other on holidays. There was always food on the table, sparkling apple, apple cider, champagne, mimosas. When my parents couldn't afford half the shit we asked Santa for, when we believed in Santa still, she, bu my mom busted her ass, got us, spent her last pennies buying us American Girl dolls, and then sewing by hand multiple different outfits for the American Girls dolls because she couldn't afford to buy them. 
So I know I have these moments where I'm so frustrated because my soul sometimes doesn't understand my mother's soul or doesn't understand Gabby's soul or doesn't understand my brother's soul or doesn't understand my dad's soul. The truth of the, of the matter is wherever we came from, from, we agreed to play these roles in each other's lives. And even though sometimes our emotions blind us to that fact, my gosh, have I lived a good life. I'm really lucky. You know? And sometimes when you're frustrated and you're mad, you, like, completely forget how much someone has done to shape your life in such a positive way and I I know I vo voiced my opinion about my mom earlier in this video but I love her so much and I know how much she has done for me in my life and that she has loved me in the capacity she knows how because of how she was loved and I am truly blessed to have my family I am truly blessed to be doing this thing called life with these people that I have made a soul contract with because I can't imagine doing this thing called life without them. You know, me and my brother are not that close. We don't talk on the phone every day. Don't see him often. But some of my best memories growing up was living on at 192 Winter Street, which is a house my grandfather built from the ground up, which has now been torn down and replaced with one of those houses that you can like literally pick up off the ground and move and his closet was literally this like two by two long strip and it would be him it would be Gabby and then it would be me and he would be the captain of the rocket ship and we'd be the passengers on the rocket ship and because back in the day there was no technology for children we had to use our imaginations when we played and some of my most vivid memories growing up some of my happiest memories growing up was playing rocket ship in my brother's closet. And in high school, he was like the popular kid. Everyone wanted to be his friends and he was the star of the basketball team. And I used to look look at him and be like, wow, my brother's so fucking cool. I hope one day I'm that outgoing and I'm that cool. And I think part of the reason I had the personality to do reality TV was because of like wanting and striving to be like my brother. God, this solar eclipse has me fucked up, y'all. All I'm saying is, even when you're mad, just take a second to really hone in on everything you're grateful for. This angle is not like the most flattering for me. <laughs> um... I love my family. I'm grateful for my family. I am extremely lucky. I'm lucky to be here. I'm lucky to be alive. I'm lucky to have this opportunity to live this magical life and to have these beautiful souls be contracted with me to make it through. And I think next time I get mad, I'm just going to remember how, like, for instance, when I was frustrated with my mom in the kitchen and, and weeping upstairs because I just want her to understand me. I'm just going to remember, like, how many nights she probably stayed up. After she works your fucking ass off to be a good mom. You probably don't t t tell her thank you enough, so. You should probably do that. Anywho, I'm gonna end this vlog. And probably cry for the next hour. Release it all into the ethers. But I am extremely grateful, and I am expressing 
my ultimate gratitude for the life I have gotten to live. Because I have not... I mean, I've been through pain. I've had struggles. I've had scary moments in life. But I haven't struggled the way other people have struggled. I have lived a very blessed life. I have. So maybe next time we go to complain about how things aren't the way we want them to, we can think about how how even in the darkest times we had it pretty fucking good and even if you didn't there's got to be a glimpse of good there because you're still here you're able to watch this video you're alive and being alive is a really great thing <laughs> it is anywho I love you finish the heart if you made it to the end of this vlog, just comment a um, a baby emoji and a crying emoji. And put boohoo. <laughs> so I know you're a real one. Bye.